Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have another very beautiful problem for you today. Uh, this one is from the Kano Sur Math Olympiad. So I think it's somewhere in South America. I'm not sure exactly where, if it rotates every year. Um, but it was in 2007 and I found it on the Art of Problem Solving Forum. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. Alright, so now I'm going to go over it. Uh, so we have a triangle ABC an acute triangle with altitudes A, D, B, E, and C, F. Um, and M is the midpoint of B, C. And the circumcircle of A, E, F meets the median A, M at point X. Um, and then the line A, M cuts C, F at point Y. And also B, X um, cuts A, D at Z. And we want to show that Y, Z is parallel to B, C. All right, so I solved this problem using projective geometry. So I know I've done so many um, problems using projective geometry. So uh, there are ways to solve it that don't require projective geometry. So if you'd like to see those, you can click on the link uh, below in the description of my video, because um, that links to the Art of Problem Solving Forum. So you can see some other posters there that solved it a different way. Um, but I am going to show you my solution. So uh, the first thing that I notice is, so M is the midpoint of BC. And whenever you have one point uh, being the midpoint of a segment, uh, you can already find a harmonic conjugate. So um, if we take B, M, C, and the point at infinity on line BC, so if you imagine like a point infinitely far away, uh, combined with those three points, uh, they would be in harmonic conjugation. And that would be because, uh, so M cuts the segment BC into the ratio BM over MC, which is one. And the point at infinity, if you take the distances to B and C, uh, as that point gets farther and farther away on line BC, uh, the ratio would approach one, the ratio of those two really, really long distances. So if you take the ratio of those two ratios, you would get one. And so they would be in harmonic conjugation. So uh, I'm going to write this out. Um, before I do that, um, note, obviously, B, E, C, F, and A, D have to meet at the ortho center. Um, so I'm going to label it H. Um, and H has to lie on the circumcircle of AEF. So the diagram and the diagram kind of just looks true, but it's clear to see why, because um, since angle AFH is 90 and angle AEH is 90, uh, AFHE has to be cyclic. So H has to lie on the circumcircle of AEF. So I'm gonna write that out. So AFH is equal to AEH is equal to 90. So AFHE is cyclic, and I'm going to call the circumcircle O. All right. So where do we go from here? Um, so I'm going to write out what I mentioned before, that B, C, M, and the point at infinity are in harmonic conjugation. And I haven't done a video on the point at infinity yet, but maybe I'll do it sometime later. But this, this point, C, B, infinity, it's, it's a point that's like infinitely far away but on line uh, BC. So this is what I mentioned before. So CM is equal to BM. And so CM over BM is equal to one. And so therefore this cross ratio has to equal one because CM over BM is one. And then if you take that point infinitely far away and you take the distances to B and C, the, the ratio of those two really long distances gets closer to one. And so this cross ratio has to equal one. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, so I want to project those four points through another point. Um, and it looks like the most convenient point uh, is point A. Um, so there might be a way to solve the problem using another point, but I chose point A. Um, especially since we define X to be the intersection of AM in the circle. So I'm going to project those four these four points through A onto the circle O. Okay, so B goes to point F, 
M goes to point X, uh, C goes to point E, but where does that point at infinity go? Well, um, if you project the point at infinity, if you, if you draw the line through that in point A, that's kind of like drawing the line through a point infinitely far away on line BC through A. So that's essentially the parallel to A through line BC. Okay. But it turns out the parallel through A to the line BC is actually the, the tangent line to the circumcircle, or, or to the circle AFHE. And that's because AH is a diameter of the circle, and AH is perpendicular to BC. So those two facts mean the tangent line to the circle at A is parallel to BC. So I'm going to write that out. So since AH is the diameter of the circle, and AH is perpendicular to BC, um, that means that the tangent line to the circle uh, passing through A has to be parallel to BC. Okay. So now I'm going to do the projection, as I mentioned, the projection through A onto the circle O. Okay. So um, point C goes to E, B goes to F, M goes to X, and that point at infinity, so it's, it's the intersection of the parallel through A to BC with the circle, um, but the parallel through A is tangent to the circle. So um, the intersection of that tangent line uh, through A with the circle is um, essentially just point A again. So I'm kind of being a little informal, but you can formalize the idea um, that basically as, as the point gets farther and farther away on line BC, uh, the intersection of A with that point will get closer and closer to point A. So we can consider essentially that um, if we project A through that point at infinity, we stay at point A. Okay. And now, so I have the points E, F, X, and A. So those are four points on a circle. So this is a cross ratio of four points on a line. Here we have four points on a circle. Now I'm going to want to project it back onto a line. So I'm going to pick another point on the circle, in this case point H, and I'm going to take those four points E, F, X, and A, and I'm going to project them back onto line A, B. Okay, so base, but before I do that, so um, it's clear that E goes to point B, A stays at A, F stays at F, but it's not clear what X goes to. So I'm gonna draw in that point. So I'm gonna let X, H meet line AB at point G. And so now if we do the projection through H on the line AB, so E goes to B, uh, F just stays at F, right? Because we're projecting on the line AB and F's already on the line. Uh, X goes to point G, which we just constructed and A stays at point A. So by transitivity, this cross ratio B, F, G, A has to equal one. Um, and so B, F, G, and A are in harmonic conjugation. And so there's a trick with cross ratios. If, if you switch um, the points on both sides of the semicolon, and then you switch the points on, on each side, it stays the same. So if I move G A over here and B F over there, and then I switch G and A and I switch B and F so that I get this cross ratio, it stays the same. And it's actually not too hard to, to show this algebraically. If you just unravel the definition here, uh, you'll see that these two have to be equal. So I'm not gonna do all the algebra here, but um, if you try it out, it's not too hard to see. So A, G, F, and B, have to be in harmonic conjugation. And so this kind of looks like if we know A, G, F, and B are in harmonic conjugation, we can apply uh, the theorem on harmonic conjugates. So I showed this in my video number 55, I believe it is. Um, but basically, um, 
if you look at triangle AGY, um, so, so temporarily I'm going to take this segment BX and I'm going to hide it. So if you look at triangle AGY uh, and you let GY intersect AB at a point, and I'm going to call it Z prime, um, I claim that Z prime and Z are actually the same point. So uh, basically we know AZ prime GX and FY are concurrent at point H. And so by the theorem in uh, video 55, that means that if A, G, F, and B are in harmonic conjugation, then X, Z prime, and B would have to be collinear. So it's actually the converse of that theorem. So the theorem would say, if X, Z prime meets A, G at point B, then those four points are in harmonic conjugation. But it's pretty easy to see that the converse also has to be true. So if, if A, G, F, and B are in harmonic conjugation, then that means that X, Z prime, and B have to be collinear, okay? Um, but if X, Z prime, and B are collinear, well, Z, the regular Z without the prime, that's the intersection of A, D, and B, X. So basically, Z prime has to equal Z. So really, these three lines, A, D, G, Y, and B, X, all concur at point Z. And now we're almost there. So it turns out, if you look very closely, not only, H is the, not only is H the orthocenter of triangle A, B, C, it's also the orthocenter of triangle A, G, Y. And that's because angle A, F, H has to be 90 and angle A, X, H has to be 90. So I'm going to write that out. So angle AFH, that's the same as angle AFY is 90 degrees. And angle AXG also has to be 90 de degrees. So H is the orthocenter of triangle AGY. And so that means that AH has to be perpendicular to YG. Um, so I'm going to write this out. But if AH is perpendicular to YG, then basically we know AH is also perpendicular to BC. So YZ has to be parallel to BC, okay? So I, I probably wrote it out a slightly different way, but uh, if YG is perpendicular to AD, and we know that's true because H is the orthocenter of AGY, then that means that YZ has to be parallel to BC, and that solves the problem. So this problem, like I said, I use projective geometry, and you don't have to. There are other ways to do it but I feel like it gave me a pretty quick solution to the problem. So there, there were a lot of steps here, but I feel like I saw the patterns very quickly because I'd seen a lot of similar problems before. Um, so hopefully um, as you, you all get more familiar with projected geometry, you will too. Uh, so if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks everyone.